Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Mafex Black Suit Spider-Man. And I am a little delayed on this review. And the reason why is because when I originally received this figure, like two or three weeks ago, the one that I got had some really bad paint defects that I just couldn't look past. So I contacted Ami Ami. I tried to see if they could get me a replacement. I sent them some pictures. And once they saw the pictures, they were like, oh yeah, we'll get you a replacement, but it might take some time. And I was like, damn, it's going to take forever. But after like a week and a half, they, they told me they had a replacement and then they sent it out to me. So the whole process really didn't take that long, um, but you know, it did cause a delay. So that's, that's why I'm doing this review now and not a couple of weeks ago. But anyways, who cares about that? Let's go ahead and get right into it because I am very excited about this figure. From what I've seen, this thing is amazing. Uh, starting off with the box, you are able to see the figure through the window along with the accessories. Down at the bottom, we get a look at the figure. And then it does say the amazing Spider-Man, Marvel, Mafex, and all that good stuff. And then we do have uh, this thing here in the corner that kind of looks like an old school comic book. I love that. I think the packaging on the Marvel Mafex figures is really dope. I love the way that it has like an old school comic book aesthetic. It's really nice. On the side of the box we get a look at peter parker you know dealing with the symbiote that's really dope on the back we get a look at the figure showing off what he could do along with the accessories and all that and then over here we get another look at the figure so yeah the packaging is collector friendly and i really do love the design of the mafex marvel packaging i think it's very cool and it does remind me of old school comic books so i love it but enough about the box let's go ahead and get this figure out and take a look so here we have spider-man right out of the box and man, this is a really, really great looking figure. Check this thing out. This costume design is beautiful, man. It's classic. It's so striking and, you know, it just catches your eye. And I think the figure represents it very well. And thankfully, this one did not have a whole lot of paint defects, but it wasn't perfect. I did have a little mark in here, which I couldn't live with. <laughs> it was a little black mark on the white spider leg, but I was able to touch it up. And now I can't even remember exactly where it was at. So, you know, I'm good to go. But it is very frustrating to have to make touch-ups on a figure like this, you know. It's very expensive. And the character has a very simple design. You would think if this is all they have to do, then it should be perfect every single time. And that may be an unrealistic expectation. But still, you know, this figure costs like 90 bucks. The paint should be perfect. But, you know, it is what it is. I made that touch-up and now I'm happy. But aside from the slight paint imperfections on the spider logo, this is this thing is amazing. It feels so good. All the joints move around very smoothly, and he's he's a whole lot of fun to play around with. I've had no problems with any of the joints on this guy. And I love the way they gave him that subtle blue shading throughout the black but you could only see it when you blast it with some lights or if you're in the right lighting, then you're able to see the blue like you could probably see a little bit of it now. But I like if you turn the lights down, then he looks completely black. So that's a really cool effect that they gave him. Uh, the proportions look good. I think the size of the head looks good in comparison to the body. That's like a common problem on black suit Spider-Man figures. It seems like, uh, you know, some of the ones that are out there have like a big head and it kind of looks weird. This version does not have that problem. But man, yeah, this, I'm loving this figure. Despite its its flaws and, uh, you know, some of the problems it's given me, this guy's probably going to end up in my top 10, maybe top 5. But, you know, like most people out there, I'm a sucker for Spider-Man. <laughs> but, man, Mafex, they just kill it when it comes to Spider-Man figures. This thing came out awesome. And although the paint on this copy is pretty good, I wouldn't say that it was perfect. As you could see, like, right there, it gets a little sloppy. Nothing major but definitely not perfect. Same thing right there. Let's see on the back too. Yeah, on the back we have a little little bit of black on the spider legs. Again, nothing to get too, you know, concerned with, but definitely not perfect. And when you're paying for like a premium figure at a premium price, you definitely want to see as close to perfect as possible when it comes to the paint applications. And then another thing you kind of have to be careful of, I'm having a little bit of paint rub on the neck. Look at the white mark right there. I mean, that's that's in an area that's mostly going to be hidden, but at the same time, it's kind of weird, you know? It's as if they casted the neck in a different color and then painted it black. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why not cast it black and then paint it black? <laughs> that way, if it scratches, 
it could stay hidden. But yeah, that, that does kind of suck. But you know, again, that's something I could touch up and just kind of get past. But yeah, that's that's really whack in my opinion. But aside from that, I think it's a good looking figure. I do really love the blue-black effect. It may be hard to see the blue right now, but it's a very cool effect. So I do wish the paint was was perfect on him. But I will say, I think it's a good looking figure. It just has some flaws. And we do get a bunch of accessories, but a lot of it are things that we've seen several times before. Thankfully, we do have some cool new things, but most of it are things we've seen with other Mafex Spider-Man figures. But we do get a bunch of hands. First off, we have a set of open relaxed hands, and then we have a pair of fists. We have a set of gripping hands that could be used to hold on to one of the web effects that he comes with. We have a set of thwip hands. We have a set of open, dramatic, wall-crawling hands. And then lastly, we have a set of hands that have magnets in them, along with some feet that have magnets in them. And then we do get some web effects. We've seen these a bunch of times. We have some longer web effects, and then some short web effects. And then we have the web effect that makes it look like he's grabbing onto the end of it. You could use these for swinging or whatever. These are nice. But we've seen all these web effects before. And he does come with a few different head sculpts. Two masked versions and one unmasked version. Here's the first masked one. It does look pretty cool. I do like the size of the eyes. And I like how you could kind of see some facial expressions underneath the mask. Like you could see some creases and stuff right in here. And it kind of looks like it's an angry Spider-Man head. <laughs> so that's nice. And then here's the second masked head. Not a huge difference, but you could see that the eyes are a slightly different shape. Let me go ahead and get the other head here for comparison. Yeah, see? The eyes are a little bit smaller on this second head. And then you could see that we have uh, some more creasing right in there that looks cool. Again, it looks like he's super pissed off under the mask. So that's awesome. Yeah, both of these head sculpts, even though they're not really that much different from each other, I do think they're both cool. And then we do have the unmasked Peter Parker head. And I think this looks awesome. I like how we have the symbiote coming up his neck right there. And I like how we have the 5 o'clock shadow. And this looks really good. And the style is very consistent with previous unmasked spider-man heads so yeah this is awesome i think they did a great job painting the hair and the skin tone and uh, this looks really good it would have been cool if he had like an angrier facial expression or something just to kind of fit like how he was feeling when he was being possessed by the symbiote basically it would be cool if he had like an angry facial expression to convey that but they try to do it with the 5 o'clock shadow, and I think it works pretty good. And then finally, we have what's probably the coolest accessory that he comes with, and that would be his web backpack. And I think this is the first time that we've seen this in 112 scale. And I think they did a pretty good job with it, but I do wish that they used like different material for the webs that serve as the backpack straps, because these are very stiff. And I've already heard about people breaking theirs. And uh, that's very unfortunate because it is a cool idea, but if you have to worry about them snapping on you, uh, that's not very fun. But the best way to get these onto Spider-Man is to have his arms back like that and slide it over his arms. And there you go. But yeah, like I said, it, it's very stiff, but he does look cool when he has it on. And like I said, this is the first time that we've seen this in six inch scale. So it's a cool accessory to have for sure. And now for some size comparisons, here we have the Mafex Black Suit Spider-Man alongside the Mafex Ben Riley Spider-Man and the Mafex Classic Peter Parker Spider-Man. And all three of these look amazing together. And yeah, I say it pretty much every single time I review a Mafex Spider-Man figure, but I really hope that Mafex continues to do different Spider-Man costumes. I would like every single version of Spider-Man done by Mafex. Um, just judging by these three, they would kill it every single time. I love all three of these figures. And they really have never disappointed me when it comes to like a Spider-Man related character. I wouldn't say that every single Spider-Man character they've made is perfect. But for the most part, they've done an incredible job. And then next up, we have them alongside the Mezco 112 Collective Black Suit Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Retro Card Black Suit Spider-Man. And it's nice to have three really solid options for this iconic version of Spider-Man. Before these guys, I don't really think there was any good Black Suit Spider-Mans. The one on the Pizza Spider-Man body was okay, but the ones before that 
were all pretty bad in my opinion. So it's nice to finally have some really good options for this version. I love all three of these figures and in my opinion you really can't go wrong with any of them. And I'm really looking forward to Hasbro updating the black suit Spider-Man. I know they've already announced the cell shaded version and that's cool and everything but I'm sure eventually they'll give us just a regular black suit Spider-Man with pinless arms and legs and a toe hinge. Once they do that Man, that's going to be really, really dope. That way you don't have to go like, you know, with one of the expensive options if you want a good, clean, really nice looking black suit Spider-Man. But even if they never get to it, this one is pretty damn awesome. But yeah, man, it's really cool to have options. And then next up, we have them alongside two of my favorite Spider-Man figures. On the left, we have the Sentinel Into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker. On the right, we have the brand new Marvel Legends animated series inspired retro Spider-Man. And then next up, we have Spider-Man alongside the Mafex Venom and the Mafex Carnage. And I think that both of these figures look really good next to this Spider-Man. Obviously, Venom is a little on the small side, but he still looks nice. And it's kind of cool how they both have that blue-black shading effect, but it's a lot more subtle on Spider-Man. You could see a lot more blue on Venom without having to hit it with so much lights. With Spider-Man, he does have that blue effect, but it's kind of, it's way more subtle, you know? So I think it looks very cool. And I like that, um, that concept kind of carries through both of the figures you know like it carries on through the line so that's nice and then next up we have spider-man alongside the marvel legends retro shocker and the marvel legends craven the hunter and every time i think about black suit spider-man these are the villains that i associate with that look of spider-man uh, because of the animated series and craven's last hunt and all that kind of stuff but uh yeah i would love to see mafex do some more villains i know they've already given us venom and carnage but i'd like to see them dig a little deeper and do something like Shocker or Craven the Hunter, especially Craven. I think they would do an incredible job on that. But any of the more obscure Spider Man villains would be amazing from Mafex. And then next up, we have Spider Man alongside the Marvel Legends Retro Lizard. I absolutely love that figure. Probably one of the best Marvel Legends that Hasbro has ever done. On the opposite side, we have the Marvel Legends King and Black Venom. That thing is awesome too. And I think that both of these figures look really good next to Mafex Spider Man. And to get him in here with even bigger characters, we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Rhino and the Marvel Legends Deluxe Venom. And it would be cool to see Mafex do some bigger characters like this, although I haven't really seen them do big characters. I know the biggest one I could think of is the Hulkbuster Iron Man. I didn't pick up that figure, but I'm curious to see what they could do with bigger characters. Um, I think uh, something like this Rhino would be amazing. And then as for articulation, psych! Last but not least, here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And just like every other Mafex Spider-Man figure, Black Suit Spidey does have some amazing articulation. But there are no surprises here because the articulation setup on this figure is identical to the articulation on all the other Mafex comic book figures. Which is awesome because the articulation on these bodies, it's some of the best articulation that you'll find on a 6 inch figure. So I really like what we have going on here. But let's go ahead and take a look starting off at the head. So he does have movement at the lower neck and at the upper neck. So using both of those, we get some really nice <laughs> tilt to the side. Look at that. Damn, that's crazy. And then he could look down to about right there, which is pretty good. And he is able to look up a really good amount. Check that out. Boom. That is awesome. And then obviously he can look left to right. So really good movement at the head and the neck. And then at the torso, we do have a diaphragm cut and a ball joint at the waist using both of those. He could crunch forward to about right there, which is pretty good, but I do wish that he was able to crunch forward just a little bit more, but that's definitely enough to get him into some great poses. And then he can lean back to about right there, which is also pretty good. And then he is able to lean to the side a really good amount using both of those joints, which I like a lot because this really helps um, the figures get into really dynamic poses with this type of torso setup. Yeah, see, so that's nice. And he is able to swivel at the diaphragm, but it does break up the spider on his chest a little bit, but thankfully he can also swivel at the waist. So you could kind of use both of those together to make it work. But yeah, I really like how Mafex does their torsos. And the same thing could be said for the shoulders. I always think they do a great job on the shoulders because they do have like this cool butterfly joint. And you can make it to where you could bring their arms back a really good amount and make it look like he's kind of cocking his fist back, getting ready to punch somebody. So that's nice. Let's 
get them situated here. There we go. Looks like he's going to knock someone out. And then you could also get his arm in front of him a really good amount. Like as if he just punched somebody. Boom. So that's good. Yeah, the way they do the shoulders is crazy. Look how much you could get his arm in front of his chest area. <laughs> that's a really good amount. So yeah, I love the shoulders on Mafex figures. And they also allow you to kind of shift things around. So like when you want to be able to bring his arm up, you could shift his shoulder area up quite a bit. And look how, how much it lets you bring his arms up. So that's nice. And then you are able to get his arm to go all the way around. He does have upper bicep swivel. He has double jointed elbows that get a really good bend look at that bam he does have a ball joint at the wrist that does have a swivel in there and a hinge and all that stuff so you can move it around and you could also swivel on the hand itself so really good movement at the hands and the arms and everything so nice nice work there and then for the legs he does have drop down hips so you could bring his leg down and then he could kick forward to about right there which is pretty nice. Doesn't really go back all that much, just a little bit. He can bring his leg to the side though, a really good amount, so you could get him into those awesome sidekick poses. Bam. So really good stuff there. And he does have that really nicely hidden upper thigh swivel you get double jointed knees. Boom. There we go. Look at that. Super smooth too. He does have a ball joint here at the ankle. So we get some swivel on the ball joint. There's a hinge in there as well. So you could hinge it forward to there. Bring it up to there. And then his foot is able to rock on that peg. And then he does have toe hinge. So yeah. Like I said at the beginning here. These Mafex Spider-Man figures have amazing articulation. You could really have a lot of fun posing this guy around. You could get him into a lot of iconic spider-man poses he could get into a pretty decent crouch but if he was able to crunch forward just a little bit more having him crouch would be a little easier but you could still make it happen yeah so you could get him into a nice crouch so yeah the articulation on mafex spider-man figures is pretty damn awesome they're a whole lot of fun to play with. You could really get them into some dynamic poses. And like I said at the beginning, it's some of the best articulation that you'll find on a six inch action figure. So yeah, they, they always kill it in this department. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think this is a really, really great figure. And I feel like Mafex did a fantastic job with it. But I will say, I am kind of conflicted because on one hand, I really do love this figure. I think he looks amazing. The articulation is very enjoyable. All the joints are very smooth. Everything is easy to move around. He's fun to play with. And you could get him into dynamic poses without a whole lot of effort. And honestly, in my opinion, I think that Mafex makes the best comic book Spider-Man figures available. And Black Suit Spider-Man is right up there with some of their best offerings. Assuming you get one that has really good paint. Because that's the thing that was kind of... That kind of has me conflicted because although I love the figure, my initial experience with this guy was kind of soured by the fact that I got one that had really bad paint to the point where I had to send it back. And then even when I got the replacement, the paint wasn't perfect. There were small things that I had to touch up and it really wasn't a big deal. Like it took me just a few minutes. I did it and now it's in the past. And in a few weeks, I'll forget that I even had to, to touch it up. But the fact that I even had to do that on a figure that cost $90 to me is is kind of inexcusable so i do love the figure but it wasn't the best experience right out of the box and i feel like for a character that has such a simple design and a figure that has such a high price tag he should be pretty much perfect and i understand that that's a very unrealistic expectation and you know obviously it's going to be very hard to be perfect but it should be close to perfect as possible especially for the cost so that's something where it's like it's kind of hard to get too excited about it because that's a big negative. But at the same time, the more time I spend with this figure 
And the further I get from that negative experience, the more I like it. So, you know, down the road, I'm going to be like, this is one of my favorite figures. But as of right now, it's like that initial experience kind of soured things for me. And yeah, Mafex really has to get it together when it comes to, you know, paint imperfections and QC. I think for the most part, they've gotten better with a lot of their figures. But I, but lately, I have been finding that there are little things here and there on some of the figures. Like with the Dark Knight Returns Superman, the leg wouldn't stay on. I was able to get a replacement, but it still kind of soured the experience. And same thing with this guy. But, you know, as I said, the further I get away from those experiences, the more I'm going to like the figures. Uh, and that's kind of where Spider-Man falls. But, you know, if I would have pulled him out of the box and the paint would have been acceptable, this guy probably would have been in my top three or top five, maybe top three, though. That's how much I like the figure aside from those paint issues uh, because it really is a great figure, man. He's so much fun to mess around with. And, I'm, you know, I knew he was going to be awesome because I'm such a big fan of the previous Mafex Spider-Man figures. So he met all those expectations for the figure itself but when it came to like specific like paint on my copies they really could have done better and again maybe maybe i'm just being overly critical or maybe i'm just being unfair or something uh but to me for a figure that looks this simple and costs this much the paint should have been near perfect in my opinion and that really wasn't the case but at this point you know the paint is good enough for me to move on with my life and enjoy the figure one more thing i do think is kind of whack on this guy is the, the way that they casted some of the plastic in the wrong color, like the shoulder. Looks like I am getting a little bit of paint rub in there. And that's because the shoulder was casted in a lighter color and then painted in black. I don't know why they didn't cast it in black and then paint it in black if they wanted to keep that paint style consistent throughout the whole figure. I think that would have been the way to go. It doesn't make sense to cast in a lighter color and then paint over it. <laughs> I get it like on the on the chest if they casted this in white and then you know painted it in the black because the white is hard to paint over black that makes sense but it doesn't make sense on the shoulder or on the neck and that's two areas where i'm getting a little bit of an issue but those are things i do feel like i could touch up and just kind of move past and forget about it and whatever but again for a 90 dollars figure that's not the kind of stuff you want to do so like i said i'm conflicted i love the figure but i'm not loving every single experience i'm having with this figure you know it's kind of weird uh, but yeah, I, I think he is a great figure and I'm very happy to have it. And one other thing I think they should improve on on future Spider-Man figures are the accessories because the things he comes with aren't bad, but we've seen them a bunch of times before. So it'd be cool to see them change it up a little bit. I really do love the unmasked Peter Parker head, but aside from that, there's not a whole lot of exciting ac accessories, you know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like I said, I'm very conflicted on this figure. I love it quite a bit but things aren't as clean as they should have been. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. If you're not aware, I do go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and every Friday at 7 p.m. So come through. Let's talk about toys and get weird. Thank you very much. Peace.